Okay, here we go. This is the third time is maybe the charm or not. It's only the second time. Hey everybody, welcome to WebDM. I'm Jim Davis. We've got a philosophical uh, story time episode for y'all today about a topic I've been thinking on for a long time. But before we get into that, I want to address something. We've heard all the requests about smoking jackets and me sitting down in a big chair for this kind of thing, but I do a lot of sitting down in my life and I like to stand up for the videos. So we might explore that later, but we wanted to let you guys know that we'd heard you. Before we get started though, we've got a message from our sponsors at Dungeon Fog. They've been our sponsors for almost two years now. We love them. And they've got this neat little animation to show you. So let's watch it and then we'll get into the story. What's got you down, Ogger? It's my dungeon, Gobbler. What's wrong with it? It could be so much more, you know? With more stuff. It can't be that bad. Let me have a look. No, no, you've got a nice dungeon swamp full of snakes and spikes. Ah, snakes and spikes. Very nice. But... I mean, that's it. How am I supposed to attract adventurers with that? Two words. Dungeon fog. Dungeon what? Dungeon fog. For over three years, we have put all our love and determination into making Dungeon Fog the best battle map map-making tool out there. Thanks to you, our amazing community, Game Masters can pick from over 10,000 community-created and shared maps and can turn them into their own epic dungeons to use and share. None of this would have been possible without you. Thank you. And may our tools always help you to create maps your players will never want to leave unexplored. So, what do you think, Goblar? It certainly is different. Different. So if you're a long time WebDM fan, you know that I don't particularly like fudging. And when I say fudging, I specifically mean uh, when a GM secretly, emphasis on secretly, alters a die roll or some aspect of mechanical uh, resolution of the game or something about the game itself uh, expressed mechanically during a session. It's a common tactic, right? There's a ton of stuff a DM has to keep track of, and it's easy to lose track of it or just kind of be fuzzy with it. But it's specifically those moments where it's like, what did this die roll mean? Or we're going to use this mechanic. And then the GM just decides, I don't like that outcome. I'm going to change it. And the primary reason for me, like the main reason, is that it undermines trust between the player and the GM. You know, when I don't know what's going on behind a screen, when I see that hesitation for a moment when a GM is uh, looking something up, or I gave them a number and it takes them a few minutes longer, a few seconds longer to sort of like figure it out. It's like, what's going on? Why is that there? The trust is important to me because I play RPGs for this emotional gamble. I want to invest in the world. I want to invest in the characters. I want to invest in the course of the game as it's played. And if there's something that tips it off that it's all predetermined or that we're we're not just playing to find out that that somebody else has decided I want this outcome this is how I'm going to nudge things along or uh, you know even if it's just in the middle of a game you know and it, it seems like it I'm just going to change things and you know because to me like what the dice say how they roll that is the story I'm there for and the payoff from that is sublime <laughs> it is a type of emotional payoff when it works that i i don't get from anything else in my media right and so it's very important to me to maintain that trust that the player and the dm know that they're following the rules that they have agreed to play with and that they're not going to undermine them 
And so I got a couple of stories about that uh, for, uh, for you guys, and uh, we'll end with a bit of a discussion about uh, uh, when I fudge and how I fudge. <clears throat> so the first story. We're in a session zero. And GM's like, uh, you know, I, I like to fudge dice every now and then. I like to change the outcome of a roll uh, for the story, right? For the fun or whatever. Always very ne nebulous, vague kind of terms. And of all the players, I'm the only one with a really strong objection to it. Some of the players are ambivalent, prefer they not to, but it's not that big a deal. Others don't care either way. And so we decide GM's going to fudge. Won't tell us when, won't tell us how, but... What we know is that as we're playing the game, that there are going to be moments where the GM decides an outcome of something rather than the dice while maintaining the illusion that the dice are deciding the outcome. And there's moments of friction through the game. I'm trying to go along to get along. It's possible for me to have fun in a game like this, obviously. And I kind of play a character who's not very serious, right? I'm not like super optimized. I don't really pick a lot of combat options for the spells, just sort of playing a hapless adventurer. Well. We get into this area of the campaign where we've been told multiple times, like, don't go there. This is the worst place ever. It's overrun by monsters and other sort of terrible creatures of the D&D world. And in true D&D fashion, we're like, thank you, but that's where the treasure is. That's where we're going to go. And we find ourselves in this threatening environment, trying to be careful. A couple of really nasty combats where it's, it's, it's real close for us. But at some point, we get captured and put in a situation where we are clearly outclassed. Now, I played a lot of uh, 5e, I've DM'd a lot of 5e. It is hard for me to not just automatically remember monster stats that I've used a lot. And so, while there was metagame going on on my part of me understanding that, like, hey, we're in like a quadruple deadly situation here. <laughs> this thing, it could be a TPK within one round. And then we start fighting. One of the players keeps pushing, pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope, uh, poking the NPCs and the like, and they fight back. We start rolling initiative. And then the enemy keeps missing and missing and missing and missing, and we somehow survive a fight that begins with us captured, and we walk away out of a multiple deadly <laughs> uh, encounter. And all I could think of was like, if that were legit, if we were rolling those dice in the open and every time the dice just kept saying, no, 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 these hapless heroes get to escape this situation, I would have been elated. This would have been a sublime experience in an RPG. I would, I, it would have been amazing. But it became hollow because I couldn't trust. I didn't know for sure whether or not those enemies kept missing or not. Whether or not they just happened to keep failing saving throws against my unoptimized wizard. And it left a really bad taste in my mouth. I compare that to another story. D&D 5e, same, similar situation, right? We're all rolling in the open. One of the reasons why I like playing on a VTT. We all know what everybody rolls. We know what the damage is. There are some big crits. <laughs> Plenty of times my character is laid out uh, by not using average damage, things like that. Really fun game. We get to this point where we're fighting a big monster and we come up with this, this elaborate plan of how to get the drop on it, going to poison it first and all this other good stuff. Classic D&D plan, overly complicated, never survives contact with the enemy, that kind of thing. And that fight becomes a near TPK. Out of five players, only one of them is left alive and walking around at the end of it. My character rolled a 20 on their death saves and just played dead <laughs> till the monster went away. And then the other characters either survived their death saves or one of them uh, uh, died and had to make a new uh, character. And it could have been the end. I've seen plenty of games where that'd be it. That's the last time we play. Nobody else, you know, everybody's discouraged, demoralized, whatever. But we don't. We, re we regroup. We come back. New plan new tactics, same monster, same, same tactical environment, but it's an entirely different fight the second time around. Our ability to work as a team is different. Our, uh, the, the new character that got added has a, a different strength that they lend to the party, which gave us that edge that we needed. We triumphed over this, uh, this monster that had, you know, the last week nearly trounced us effortlessly. <laughs> and the excitement, the high, the feeling of that 
was what I am here for. That is the emotional payoff of the RPGs. And because it's all in the open, there's no doubt in my mind that the experience is authentic. It's not predetermined by someone else because they think it might be what I want. I like a TPK if it happens organically. That's an interesting story to tell, even if it means the end of one of my favorite characters. And so having that openness, having that trust is vital in an RPG. There was an online discussion back uh, a few months ago about uh, monster HP and pacing and the like. Uh, usual pushback comes from sort of whether or not it's okay to end a fight or, or, or something or to change something about the mechanics of that fight because the table's losing energy and interest. And, you know, sort of like observing the discussion and realizing like, well, yeah, of course you adjust the monster's hit points on the fly if it seems as though the table is losing interest, right? And then it occurred to me like, wait a minute, how is changing a monster's hit points on the fly in the middle of a combat any different than changing the outcome of a die roll in the middle of combat in order to get a certain outcome? And I really started thinking about this because it was like, oh, all right, it, I love RPGs, can't stop thinking about them. If there's contradiction in, in what I think about it, I, I can't sleep, right? It's just kind of the crazy person that I am. And so <laughs> it started to occur to me that like the difference is, is that the one is about negating player choice. Uh, I, as a player, have chosen to do something. Uh, I am, you know, I'm using a resolution mechanic from the game. The dice are rolled, the points are spent, whatever, whatever, whatever. And the DM just decides on a whim, no, we're going to go this other way. Whereas the other is a monster entirely within the DM's purview. And not just that, a monster that has a range of hit points, a minimum and a maximum. Now the monster manual presents you with the average for convenience, but just because it has a static number of how many hit points it has, doesn't mean we should fool ourselves as players or GMs into thinking that means anything. That monster has as many hit points as the DM wants it to have. It could have one, it could have a million. And for it to change in the middle of a fight is also perfectly fine because you as a player don't know what those hit points are. To me, this is the biggest argument for having variable monster hit points and to not know how many hit points your monsters have until players start attacking them and then roll it and see what it is. It's more interesting when you have a fight that, that has an ebb and flow because some monsters are weaker than others, some are stronger than others. But regardless, if there's something happening at the table, if there's a moment that you want to be tense and exciting and, and heart pounding and it's dull, and the tension is gone, and the dramatic question has been answered, it's time to wrap it up. It's time to say, yeah, the next hit gets this guy. Now, my personal opinion on this is that it's the transparency of when a GM says, I am negating the rules of the game in order to make the experience of playing the game better. When the GM says, you know what, guys, it's late. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we've all got stuff to do tomorrow the next hit is going to do it. Or, yeah, I can tell that you've had a, a you know, really bad losing streak uh, tonight, you know, player. Um, why don't you try this solution? Why don't you, you know, do something a little different? Finding a way to give them a nudge or a boost or whatever. But to me, it is about communicating the intent of it to the player so that the trust is maintained. That they don't look at that moment and detect and go like, well, you did it in my favor this time. But have you ever done it in a way that wasn't to my favor? Or you could have done it to my favor and didn't, and something bad happened? I don't want players thinking that. So I came away from, from reading the, uh, the online discussions or like having my own thoughts about it with, with an idea that like a system's rules are there to support the gameplay at the table. You got to take those rules seriously. You got to make a best effort to learn them. To understand them, especially if you're going to change a lot of aspects about them or, or switch things up, right? How does the rule, how the rules work is pretty important. Picking the right rule system is important. If you're playing a game that you don't enjoy playing, that doesn't produce outcomes that you find exciting, then you're playing the wrong game. So the rules are important, but they're not the most important thing, and they're not the game at all. They support the game. 
They tell you whether or not an action that a player takes when they're playing the game succeeds or not. But we've all been in those moments where people start playing the rules, where they just talk in terms of numbers. Of, I got a, you know, I got a 17 to hit and I did 30 damage. My DC is this, and this is this is the effect. And there's no juice, there's no fire, there's no passion in that game. There's no fiction, there's no imagination, there's no pretend. There's just rules interaction. Sometimes that's all right because it just happens, but. To start from that position and play from it, really, it to me, is the opposite of what a role-playing game is about. A role-playing game is about the decisions the players make, about the imaginary world that we all share together, and the choices they make about tangible, real things in that setting, right, is what matters. Choice, context, consequence, the entire loop of that why you're making the decisions you are, what happens after you make those decisions, and how the GM responds to that, to that and reacts to it creates an emergent story that is unlike anything I have ever experienced and continues to surprise me in ways that I never saw coming. <clears throat> so, now for the dark confession. I do fudge. I fudge sometimes in the sense of like, yep, that die rolled one thing and I'm going to ignore it and do uh, something else. What I take those moments as when I do them is, why am I doing that? And was there a way to avoid that in the future? If I feel the need to ignore the result of a mechanical resolution, then was it right to use that mechanical resolution in the first place if I wasn't willing to accept any of the outcomes? And what I found is that like the longer I GM and the more systems that I play, the more I realize that like there are so many times when I resort to using the rules and mechanics and the like when I don't need to. And it just is easy to just like have the player describe what they want to do or what action they want to take or whatever, and then let it happen if there's no tension or there's no interesting consequence of failure. And it's only in those moments that we resort to the rules and presumably the rules that we've chosen have interesting outcomes to those questions and then we accept them. I'm not a rules light uh, player. I like playing all kinds of games. Well, I prefer rules light when I GM a game. But what I want is a fun experience for the people at the table, fun as they define it. And what I found is that there are a lot of ways to nudge the game and change it in ways that enhance that experience and also in ways that don't uh, degrade the integrity of the setting or erode trust between the uh, GM and players. So I'd like to talk a little bit here at the end of the show about those. Here's when I fudge. If there's lagging table energy, if it seems as though everybody is just losing energy, if, if, if you know, a quick break doesn't pick us back up, but there's just something that's going on, if it's like because of a losing streak uh, on you know, for one of the players or things just aren't going their way, then that might be a moment that I decide to intervene and start uh, changing the mechanical expression of the game whenever we decide to resort to it. If a player's had a tough week in real life, if their actual real life experience has been, you know, just shit that week, and some kind of minor thing in the game, this game of pretend that we play when we have a chance, can brighten their day because I know them as a person, this will happen, then I'll fudge in their favor to do that. If it's time to wrap things up, if the session should have ended 15 minutes ago and we're still in the middle of a big thing, it's time to start wrapping it up. <laughs> it's time to start saying, maybe tracking every individual hit point, every individual success on this skill challenge, whatever, isn't going to do us any favors and we should come to a satisfying conclusion to this session so that we can get on with our lives and not have it run over into other things we might have going on. So those are all times that I'm gonna change the rules of the game on the fly at the table, but I'm not going to do it without telling the players. Even if I don't give them all the details, even if I don't say like, this is exactly what I'm doing in exactly the right way, I'm going to tell them right now for these reasons, I am going to change the rules of the game. And I've never had an objection to that. And I think if, when I think back to my experience in the first story of the GM who sometimes fudges roles, most of the people in the group didn't care whether it would happen or not. It was really only me who was had a very strong opinion about it. And so, 
what I <laughs> what I do whenever I decide to fudge uh, in games that I run is I want to do it in a way that doesn't negate player choice. To me, that's that's the big one. And I want to do it in a way that keeps the setting intact, that maintains the integrity of it. And what I found is that the more I just vary up things in my game, the more opportunities for me to respond to the player's actions and change the course of the game and the pace of the game based on what the mood of the table is, it just, it just gets easier, right? So for instance, when I started using morale in combat, it meant that enemies would just run away when something terrible happened. That, that there wasn't just one end state to combat, which was the battlefield is clear of all the enemies, they are lying dead on the floor, but we have accomplished our goals, there is no more armed resistance to whatever it is that we want, because they ran away, they surrendered, some of them are dead, some of them are knocked out, some of them had a change of heart. Like All of those, all of those uh, ways of running the game give me options to change the pace of the combat without needing to do anything with monster hit points. Now, I'll still vary up monster hit points on the fly. I'll still vary up monster damage. But one of the things that I found lessens the need to do that in the middle of play is to use variable monster HP ahead of time and to roll monster damage at the type table. That by adding variety to those things, there's less need for me to intervene because we all we already have that intervention you know there's a big group of enemies or monsters to fight if they don't all have the same hit points if some of them are weaker than others some of them are stronger than others if tw of 20 kobolds they all have different amounts of hp then that kind of matters some of them are going to be stronger some of them are going to be weaker it changes the tenor of the fight rather than if they all have the same hp and the changing of the conditions of the fight, the changing of, the th of those things, keeping NPC motivations complex, keeping things variable, that is what gave me the tools that I needed to change the pace of the game, change the conditions of the game based on what the table's mood is, and still keep the integrity of the game world intact. I didn't have to use brute force techniques like changing the outcomes of die rolls or the like, when I could just say, the monsters run away or your former enemies come at you with an offer of alliance because conditions in the world have changed and now they no longer see you as an enemy. You can set up the PCs for various levels of success and help push things in their favor without needing to resort to this technique that, that I see does more harm than good. And so I found that all of these ways in which I can alter the course of the game, I can change stuff up, and sometimes it's a mechanical expression of it, sometimes it's just how I have the world react, serve the same purpose that the people who say, well, I fudge dice because I want the game to be fun, or I, you know, I, I, I change this part of the game because I want the players to have a good experience. I found that I achieved that in a different way that's more enjoyable for me and it keeps my principles of having that player and DM transparency intact and keeping the integrity of the setting in place. And honestly, that's it. Like, <laughs> I found that it just creates for more enjoyable games. I have less tension between players. There seems to be less suspicion of whenever I run games, of getting that sense that the players don't quite uh, trust what's going on. And like, that's what I'm here for. That opens the door for a type of play that elevates the game from mere pretend to something greater than that, to something really wonderful. And if nothing else, just uh, think about it the next time you feel like you want to alter the course of, of what a mechanical resolution said or change something about the game and see if there's a way to do it to keep the trust and keep the integrity of the setting intact. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. See you next week. If you want more ramblingness uh, like you had in this video, you can go check us out over on WebDM Talks on all podcasting apps. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and help us appease the algorithm gods that increasingly rule our lives. And if you haven't yet, you can pre-order our book over on Backerkit. We're hard at work finishing up Weird Wastelands, and so we want you to be able to check it out. Link in the description. Check it out, like check, check it, it out. Like, seriously, seriously, you have to check it out. If you don't, 
you just should.